Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar. Guitar Stories Podcast. Let's see if we can hear Dan. Hello. I wonder if we can hear him. <laughs> oh man, does it work? Because we're now on um, we're on different channels, and uh, I really want to know if Dan's working. Can you hear Dan, everybody? Hello, hello, hello. Reply. Can you hear me? Earth to Dan. Working? Now, working? I don't know if they're w winding me up. I don't know. All right. Well, they're probably making fun of us. <laughs> well, they just made... See, I can definitely hear Dan. Yes, you can hear him. Oh, my goodness, Dan. It's working. Um, Amazing. The, it, the reason it's different is just for technical reasons in case uh, we need to alter the audio later uh, post, you know, and te most technical words. And... Um, I've just realized we've gone live with, with your picture of your new guitar on there, mate. That's, uh, <laughs> that's nice. Just circle around there. A little uh, preview of what's to come later. There's the chat. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hello, so, guys. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the people in the live chat on YouTube. And hello to everyone who's listening in the podcast. Good to be back. It is. Yeah. Have you had a good week, mate? I did, I did. Kind of stressful, but still, you know, we're in preparation for 2021 and Christmas is uh, coming closer. And it's a big surprise, like every year, that the end of December, Christmas time is very busy. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, what like, can I say? How have you been? I've, I've seen your post today that was a little bit dark, like much, much darker than usual. But yeah, it's, it's just honest. It's not dark. Um, some people that follow the channel might know that I, I suffer from depression and I have medication. So that's the dark stuff. And sometimes days just a little darker than others. And sometimes days turn into weeks. Um, <laughs> honest truth, I've not felt like myself recently. And it's been mm. a struggle to be whatever I am. Um, 
but now I, I feel I'm back, you know? Um, All right. It's kind of hard when you're a video maker because you have to s sit there or stand there in front of the camera and do that. And I just didn't feel like doing it. And that's a big part of what I do is honesty. And if I was really honest, I'd sit there and say, don't want to do this. <laughs> but, um, you know, I have one of the best jobs in the world. So it, it, it's hard. So if anybody else out there also um, suffers from the visits from the black dog, then uh, you have a friend in me and we understand here on my channel and um, on the Guitar Stories podcast as well. Mm. It's good to hear. But yes, it's, it's, I am feeling better. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good to speaking hear. Of, speaking feeling of better. feeling, sorry. Yeah, I'm excited. The problem is I, when I'm down, then I go up again and now I won't stop talking. You see. <laughs> I ain't going to stop you. <laughs> I have some exciting news, which is a secret between me and me. I okay. have fixed Dan getting bigger and smaller. No. Yeah. It's a way. It, how, it's a big how feature of the podcast. A big feature. Uh, that Dan sometimes gets a little bit smaller. And um, I think I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> you think you fix it. So but in doing so, in yeah. doing so, I've become rather blocky. So if you're watching on YouTube, I can do that. Like Chuck Norris and... Um, if you're not watching on YouTube, that was a really weird bit of audio. <laughs> so Sarang's asking in the chat, do we cancel the Make Dan Bigger Gang t-shirts? Hey, you've already placed orders at Teespring, right? Absolutely. Well, you don't order. You, I've just had to say, you know, I've, I've met with the design team. Most yeah. of them are currently working for Santa Claus, to be honest. You know, the, uh. the elves. It's apparently what elves do when they're not working on Christmas toys is design t-shirts for guitar podcasts. <laughs> on teespring.com <laughs> on teespring.com we're not sponsored by teespring.com Dan however we nope. are sponsored by Bulldog Music Gear cha-ching um, <laughs> if you're not aware of what Bulldog Music Gear do they they do um, hangers for guitars, they do guitar stands uh, they do a whole menagerie of different things like that and later in the podcast we'll be telling you how you can win a Bulldog guitar Hanger. Amazing. You're very wobbly tonight, Dan. I don't know why. Yeah, it's like you, you wobble, your camera's wobbling around. It is. Yeah, it's funny. I got. I got to fix it. Let me check that. Ah, it's better now. So Valeria wants us to keep the t-shirts, and <laughs> whoa! And if Valeria <laughs> wants it, she's going to have to get it. What have I got? I've got a screwdriver in my pocket. I wonder what that was. <laughs> so, um. Before we carry on, Dan, um, the people watching this might notice that there are some guitars at the beginning of the podcast on the countdown to when we start. Mm -hmm. And some of those, one of those guitars belongs to me. The rest belongs to friends and people that I know. I would like to change that up. I'd like to add some more guitars in there, Dan. Which is a lovely idea. Can I send in some suggestions too? Sure. <laughs> I mean, just, just send me the Ivanes catalog because that's exactly what you're going to do. <laughs> This countdown's <laughs> 10 minutes long this week. Why is that? <laughs> well, no, I, I thought I'm we could actually open it up to the, to the viewers and the listeners. Yeah. Michael is one step ahead of us. Should we send pictures? Yes, you should. Dan, how can they do that? They can send it to guitarstories at gmail.com or send it to you via Facebook or on Instagram. Or they can send it, tag us on Instagram just by using at Guitar Stories Podcast. So we will see all those pictures. It's a really good idea. That's what I want. I want them to post their guitar on Instagram and tag us at Guitar Stories Podcast. And then we'll get these little notifications and that'll make me feel warm <laughs> inside. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Matt Dawson, yes, you can send the guitars you've made. You can send up any picture of any guitar as long as you own it or it's in your house and it belongs to someone else. But you know what, what would, would be even better? What's that if they not just send us the pictures or tag us, like if they post a picture of like their favorite guitar and actually add a guitar story to it, like when they acquired it or why this guitar is so special. Oh, that's How's good. That? Yeah, we've got our own little listener's guitar story section. I would love to hear your guitar stories, guys. Yes, Andy's not. If nodding. you don't give us your story, then we'll just make one up for you. <laughs> and it probably won't be uh, very creative. 
<laughs> it's a caption this um, <laughs> variation of the guitar stories podcast <laughs> I, can't, I can't promise that i can't promise um i think we should have some guitar news dan what do you think yeah i'm up for some news let's hit the news well we have lots of news this week and i i think i've actually just pressed the wrong button on the thing so i can't tell where they are there there we go. There we go. Sorry. I beg your pardon. There's our first piece of news right on screen there. That is one heck of a photo. <laughs> oh, yeah. The hair. It looks so modelly. Look at proof. the hair. <laughs> Can anyone in the chat tell us who that is? Who, who recognizes those people right there? Uh, Dan, do you want to lead with this story? Uh, I can. Actually, a um, couple months ago... Uh, Juan Alderet uh, had a terrible, terrible bicycle accident, and uh, yeah, I think it was his kind of he was in kind of critical condition, and luckily he's now back on recovery. But you know how it usually is it that, that you know eats up a lot of money. So basically, his friends from new music business and former bandmates they're trying to you know get some money from from auctions and so paul gilbert basically joined that and offered one of his iconic 80s guitars which is basically a destroyer iceman kind of mix-up yeah yeah it's it's the ice destroyer isn't it ice destroyer yeah <laughs> that is correct yeah yeah, and he was not just selling this guitar on Reverb. He was also, you know, I think he produced a video which is available on YouTube, so you can check that out mm -hmm. too. And uh, and uh, I mean, this guitar is is almost like thirty five years old now. Um, I get my math right, so it has a lot of stories to tell. And uh, yeah, in this video, which I highly recommend to everyone to check out, uh, Paul is telling quite a few stories about it, starting from why he wanted that guitar in that particular color. Spoiler alert, I think Motley Crue played a vital role in that. Uh, <laughs> why, he, why he grew his hair long at that time. And, uh, yeah, you know, all those kind of details, what, what kind of modifications he did on this guitar, because I think it's got a tone zone on the bridge and a single coil in the neck position, but the neck position is actually routed for a humbucker. So it's a highly modded guitar. It's, it's pretty much uh, in the vibe of the 80s, and it's a perfect... Uh, testament of, of uh, you know, the trends of the late 80s. Yeah. I, I really like it. It was way too expensive for me personally to even consider checking that out. I think that they asked It's currently for it. on 13,000 US dollars. They already sold it. They sold it. Oh, they've sold it, have they? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They already sold it. So it's a lot of money for the, the treatment of Juan. Yeah. But, but also, it's, uh, it's not that much money. I, I truly feel that's not that much money for that guitar you know it's it's not such as an iconic guitar as i don't know um hendrix's strat or whatever but for me being a massive paul gilbert fan um that kind of is iconic you know what i mean yeah yeah i hear you completely i mean i mean that that guitar it was in so many photos and in a lot of videos and live recordings oh andy's readjusting yeah. the camera i'm readjusting the camera i've just realized i forgot to turn my light on and that might All be right. why why this camera is having issues um keeping me in focus and, and stuff like that but yeah um <laughs> and also what's really weird is i think it's the drummer on the right hand side as we're looking at it, it looks strangely like my grandmother <laughs> i i i mean do with that information what you will but yeah <laughs> I mean, what I what I find striking is like the colors. How vibrant can a color be? I mean, this is the slimiest or, or most aggressive green that I've seen, and also the the pink. Yeah. It's so, whew, right in your face. Also, he doesn't look like my nan in the face because someone said he looks like Mr. Bean. It's just the hair, okay? It's just the hair, <laughs> and the dress sense, and the midriff. Um, what is the green guitar? I have no idea what that is. Does anyone know what this green guitar is? It it looks like a bit of a Fender lead, but it, it can't be. Uh, on Epiphone, um, didn't they have like solid bodies at that time? I have no idea. So in Racer X, um, like the green Strat guitar style was solid bodies. Played? Yeah, yeah, I I really don't know. Huh. But I'd love to have been in that meeting with Racer X. I wonder who got their guitar first. Like, you know, like, was it Paul? I got this pink one, and, and then, oh, well, I've just got this Sunburst Strat. Well, you can't have that. You know, and, and 
Yeah. You know what? So, I think we, we'll what? be talking about that a little bit later because I think this is a Epiphone Coronet. We will be talking about that. In fact, right now. Woo! What a smooth so, transition. And now, if you go, yeah. can you go back to the previous picture because I think that was pretty yeah, close. Of course. Oh, hang on. Ask me to press. Could could it I be? I don't know. I don't think it is. I think the lower horn on that is too telly like, and the the Epiphone coronet is the lower bout is is more. It's more symmetrical. Can you see? Mm -hmm. All right. What do we What do we think, people in the chat? Does anyone know what guitar that is? Sarang says it's an Ibanez. Oh, it is. Come on, Dan. Why don't you, Why don't you know everything about everything? It's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, it's likely because if everyone, like, if Paul played an Ibanez, then the relation should have would have been there. But uh, from top of my head, I couldn't. I couldn't say what what kind of model it is. It looks. Uh, it looks a lot like an. I don't know. To me, it's Eric like, is saying Valley guitar. Uh, I, I don't uh -huh. know if that's a brand or or the name, but. Um, and also, Sarang is saying that Clapton received no bids on his guitar. So I, I'm not sure if we mentioned that last week, or, or we we tried to, but we got run over last week with with time. Mm -hmm. uh, the was it the million dollar? Yeah, we did talk about it. Um, I can't remember what year, but yeah, it was it was expensive, and, and no one no one bought it apparently. I trust hmm. Sarang. Sarang, I trust you. Uh, I'm taking that information as real. Which is interesting because at the moment everything, when it comes to guitar, everything is booming. Prices are exploding, mm -hmm. and you know people are sinking a lot of money into valuable gear. But and hmm. speaking of sinking money into gear, I'm trying to. That's not even a transition, but I'm going to take it. That's the <laughs> Epiphone um, Coronet, and the um, well, it's, it's a Gibson lawsuit. Another one. Huh. Another <laughs> Gibson lawsuit. Welcome to the lawsuit of the week. We should have presented. a little section, yeah. Yeah, presented by Gibson. <laughs> oh, man, this is actually quite a, a sad one. Um, satellite amplifiers bought the trademark for Coronet, the name, and they were building. There's one right there. Uh, they mm -hmm. were building the Coronet under satellite guitars or satellite amplifiers. And Adam was doing this for quite a while. And then Gibson decided that, hang on a minute, we kind of want to bring that back with the Epiphone brand. So actually, you're not allowed to have that name anymore. And forgive me for my accuracy. But um, if you put a big company like Gibson up against a very much smaller company like satellite amplifiers, it's sadly pretty clear who's going to win before it even goes to court. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what's happened. And satellite guitar satellite amplifiers, sorry, have relinquished the name uh, Coronet. And they're not making them anymore, so which is a shame. I never played one, um, but I'm uh, I played the Iverson, um, his version of the Coronet, and that's a wonderful guitar. I played that last year, uh, sorry, this year in the Guitar Show in Birmingham. And mm. um, but Neil Iverson has a very um, faithful recreation of the Coronet. It's just not called the Coronet. So I don't know if Satellite Amplifiers will continue making the guitar or will bring it back under a different name. But as far as I'm aware, it's nothing to do with the shape. It's just the name. Hmm. Um, okay. And my question here is not necessarily for you, Dan, but um, someone's done something wrong and someone's done something right here. What do we think? What's 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 our opinion here? Because I'm I feel very sad for Satellite. I don't feel any sympathy for Gibson. But is it their name? You know. Are they allowed to do this morally? Forget legally now. <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, my take on that thing, if if you allow me to yeah, jump well, in yeah, here, is take? that yeah. like those 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 kind of names? It's not like one of the A A names, you know. It's not it's not like Les Paul or Stratocaster. Yeah. Uh, for instance, just like take the Hyperion term. You've got um, we've got the pickups in the AZs. They are called Hyperions, and I think they are like three or four different products in the in the musical instruments market alone that are called Hyperion. Wow. You know, so I think um um Bella is that how do you, I, I don't know how do you how, how you pronounce it Belagur guitars? Belagur? They have a model that's called Hyperion. I don't know that brand. Nope. Okay. But I'm happy with Belagur. Ah. Belagur. <laughs> 
Beluga car. Beluga. Beluga. Beluga car. Yeah. See, that just reminds me of the Mandalorian, which I'm, you know, I, I just desperately want to talk about. But we'll, oh, yeah. we'll, we'll skip yeah. the guitar news. But I mean, I don't even know why we're doing a guitar podcast. It could just be Mandalorian <laughs> we'll just is Star great. Podcast right away. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. But with the names again, like um, I, I've got a very specific opinion about the like, Gibson that I cannot share here for like professional reasons. Sure. Uh, because it's very closely associated to my job. Um, but the whole, like, I mean, we're making fun of that, of the trademark infringement of the week, but it's so sad for the whole business because it's it's like the MI industry is at the moment more dominated by lawyers and not by musicians and, and guitar makers. And this is a point that I can hardly accept, to be honest. I can't. When it becomes more about business than music... Um, at least, at least, when it, it's always been more about business than music, of course, because that's the very nature of success and and money that has to be made. But I kind of preferred sure. it when when we didn't know, you know, when we hadn't seen behind the curtain. And now, yeah. um, now it's all splattered everywhere, and and we're actually we're adding to that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we can't, I can't really complain. But um, yeah, it, it's it's a shame. Uh, I would just like to say hello to Guillaume, who's in the chat now. I miss you, brother. Um, I hope you're doing well. Um, also, uh, Overdrive Guitar Channel, uh, George Stone and Daniel and Eric and everybody. It's nice to see the names back chatting away. I hope you're all having pizza and beer and stuff like that. <laughs> what are you having, Andy? I'm having good old fashioned Austrian tap water. What about yourself? There you go. Cheers. Cheers. Well, um, let's talk about some, some more lore, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> guitar Center. Uh huh. So let's not dwell too much upon the news because it's not much has happened really. But uh, I loved your take on it that you spoke to me about off camera. If you could uh, possibly recreate that again, that was fun. <laughs> well, I was actually making a lot of fun about the article itself because, you know, we, we, we had some, some discussion about Guitar Center's bankruptcy. And at the moment, creditors are pushing back on on the whole situation because there's a, according to the source, and uh, I'm, I'm quoting here someone, According to people with knowledge of the matter, I mean, it could be my grandma, but yeah. uh, according to those to those people, um, there are some creditors that uh, have the intention to vote against the bankruptcy plan. And here's the thing: I mean, with a brand like Guitar Center that is so big, and a minority of of, of uh, you know first lien holders or first lien people. <laughs> I mean, what's the point? I think it's just like a storm in a teacup, basically. You know, because ultimately, I, I'm I'm not too deep into the whole legal situation in the states, but ultimately there'll be a judge uh, who's in charge of deciding what is the best solution for all the people that owe money, mm -hmm. um, uh, all the people that that Guitar Center owes money, and, um, and he will make a decision that is in favor of of the majority and not of a small minority. So um, I might be completely wrong, but that's my take on that. I think that's just like another an, another news headline of Guitar Center just had to be, but it's not really. It will not be de decisive for the outcome of of the brand Guitar Center and and um, you know the chains itself. I can see that. I don't know, man. We're, we're non-Americans, so I, I feel very uneducated in that sense. But um, again, it seems like you know not much music, lots of business, and. Uh, <laughs> It's it's just a shame when any music shop or any music establishment or any music business is in trouble. It doesn't doesn't spread positivity in the music world, you know. And nope. um, I don't know. I just get I just get worried that if there's all this negative stuff going on, then it just feeds into itself and creates negativity where there wasn't any negativity before. Um, mm -hmm. I just want I think to play it also over. <laughs> you know? I think it also overshadows. I mean, guitar centers on the news every other day, but it overshadows that there are quite a few, you know, mama papa stores and, and medium sized brick and mortar stores that are kind of fighting with the whole COVID situation. And, and you know, they are also fighting for their existence. So it's not like that guitar center is like basically the center of the MI universe. It's a big part of it, but, uh, you know, there are many, many, many other entities and and they all struggle with COVID and and the consequences so i, I I'm think a it's a reflection better. of um the inability to adapt which yep um is more important now and, and extremely important in 2020 but more important daily 
I don't want to go too far into it, but my dad had a job for life. He worked at the same place from the age of 17 to the age of 67. 50 years. Wow. Uh, <laughs> no, maybe more. 50, 59. Crikey. Okay. Uh, and now I've been through more jobs than most people in my family, you know, and, and um, there's no such thing as a secure job anymore. But it's all about, yep. you know, really living. It's exciting. I find it exciting and scary, of course. But I've had to adapt and readapt and readapt on almost like a monthly basis. And, and this year, almost everybody has a guess. So adaptability, people, that's what you need. That's the number one skill for surviving and thriving. Adaptability. Survival of the rockingest. Speaking of adapting and, you know, things changing, Dan, here we go. There's um, Bob Dylan playing a bass. Wow. The times they are changing. They are, Dan. Uh, Bob Dylan has <laughs> sold his 600 song strong catalog to Universal Music in one of the biggest publishing deals in the history of the music industry. Can you let that sink in for a second? That's 600 a songs. It's a lot of songs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Boy. Are you, are you into Bob Dylan? Not as much as I feel I should be. Do you know what I mean? I feel like a, a social yeah. pressure that he must be respected and enjoyed. And I've gone through, I mean, I wasn't a fan of Hendrix for many, many years. I just didn't get it. Then I wasn't a yeah. fan of Johnny Cash for many years. And now... I, I, I'm, it's so part of who I am and what I do. Bob Dylan, I saw him live in at Bergklam in Austria. I, I'm, I'm going to say three years ago, but it could be anywhere between two and five, seven, you know. And I was two meters from him. We were right at the front of the stage, and I was two meters from him. And it was one of the worst shows I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best in the sense that his backing band were phenomenal. All the musicians on the stage were phenomenal except Bob Dylan, which is <laughs> quite famous. He's quite famous for it. He, it was so, so close that I could hear his piano through his monitor. And he was, he might as well have just had his eyes closed and just been stomping anything, you know, <laughs> it was hilarious. And they did all <laughs> blues versions of his songs. Yeah. Um, and being a, a native English speaker, of course, I had a bit more insight to what was going on than my Austrian neighbors. Um, and uh, he did an encore, and it was a blues version of "Blowing in the Wind." Yeah. And then it finished, and I was like, "Oh, that was that was not too bad. It was not too bad." And my girlfriend said to me, "He didn't do "Blowing in the Wind." <laughs> yeah, he did. That that was a blues version. A what version? Oh no. But it was a very, it was so uh, so weird and the bluesy version. That's no, that's that's Bill Cosby. Um, uh, yeah, it was it was odd. But the point oh, is, wow. this was a publishing deal, Dan, um, yeah. which is not uh, everything, is it? So he I don't know. The what's, what's, the, what's the deal about? Like, I think it was worth $300 million. Uh, it's, it's quite a lot. I mean, it's more than I could afford. <laughs> Mostly, importantly, so he sold it to Universal, and they own the Beatles, Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. and who else did I see? Oh, this is this is really weird. I read this in the article. The Beatles, Taylor Swift, and Lana Del Rey, which is a really weird <laughs> triplet. <laughs> and I, I'm not really sure how I, how I feel about it. I mean, it, it's as we said, the the times are changing, but it's he's adapting. You know, I mean, he's he's made a lot of money. I mean, why not? Maybe mm. he's made enough of it. Sell it on. Yeah. yeah. What what are, I don't know if you're in the chat. If you have an opinion on that, a take, I'd love to hear it because. I don't know. It's his creativity. It's his art. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit of George Lucas selling his Star Wars story to uh, to Disney. True. Yeah. I mean, if you're in an age like, like George was or that Bob now is, I mean, how much more money you can you spend? <laughs> but not just that. Maybe he's maybe it's like his albatross. Maybe he's been wearing yeah. this Bob Dylan. He He's a person, but he's also Bob Dylan, you know? Yeah. So maybe yeah. he's maybe he just wants a break. I don't know. I'm I'm totally surmising and making that up, but maybe by selling his songs he's freed himself to write more? I I I don't know, but it, I I get that kind of feeling as well. <laughs> maybe he hates his children coming from the chat. J sixty nine. Yeah. Um 
But he has inspired somebody else who we, we may have heard of, and this is David Crosby, who Hurrah. today, I think, we just said that he'd also wants to sell his songs. And he blames his financial trouble on people stealing his thong- songs through streaming. Mm-hmm. Um, I, don't, I don't want to say that. I, I can't quote him exactly on that. Um, did I... Here we go. He says, I'm selling mine also. I can't work and streaming stole my record money. Sorry, that's that's what he's quoted as saying. Mm. Um, I see his point, of course. I also question what he did with all the money he made <laughs> in all those years. Um, <laughs> that's my, that was my first yeah. question. He's um, not necessarily an unknown artist, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I, I think that at a certain at a certain point you have a, a lifestyle that requires like big bucks every month to come in. Yeah, I mean he's he's got to be like at least ten euros a day on beanie hats. <laughs> Looking at that beanie hat habit, I mean that's that's a good ten euro hat there, one per day, never the same color. Wear it once. There's actually an idea. Wear it every day. Stick it on eBay the next day. Make loads of money. There you are, David Crosby. <laughs> there must be enough people that would want his beanie. <laughs> so yeah, adaptability, Dan. These these older musicians are having to adapt, uh, and that means selling off their creative estate, which on one hand is kind of sad. On the other hand, can't take it with you, you know. On the other hand, I mean, they have they already have their musical legacy, so they have a lot of hits mm. in the radio. Mm. I mean, now Christmas time, how much more Mariah Carey can you? except at a certain point, you know. The answer like, is I have like a... never enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's like a certain amount that I can really, you know, accept, but then, you know, it's it's just too much. Too much Mariah. I don't yeah. want a lot for Christmas. <laughs> and how much, how much Chris Rhea do you get in contrast, you know? That's a good point. Think about that. Good. Oh, man. All right, shall we move on to our next section? Yeah, what is our next section, Dan? Well, there it is. I got a bit gun, so gun, 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 gun crazy with the with the button there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we previewed this at the beginning, Dan. It is up to you, my friend. Take it away. Look at that. Oh yeah, I have finally. I've got my AS one hundred, and I can. Get it right here. This beautiful guitar is almost 40 years old, has been made in October 1981. The best year. It's actually, yep, best year. <laughs> and this year. It's actually signed by the head of quality control inside. I think it's pretty hard to see, but you got to believe me. It's hand signed and it's in incredible shape. It looks gorgeous. And it's got the original Super 58 humbuckers. Legendary. And what are they? What are they based on? What are they uh, an homage to? Do you know? Uh, no. Do you know? No, it wasn't a trick question. I genuinely do not know. Um, Actually, I think they they wanted to have like a a jazzy kind of pickup. Uh huh. So they went with it. Yeah. I think these are uh, people will probably like hold me to it, but I think they are El Nico Five based. Like they're very. Let's let's put it that way. They're very. Um. Softly voiced, very Softly creamy, voiced. very, they're not harsh at all. Have you so, plugged it in with a load of distortion just to see what it sounds like? Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, but I'll, I'll definitely got to try that. Like rectifier and then third channel and then <laughs> go for it. Yeah, that's, that's what the guitar is built for. Yeah. I'm really I, enjoying the, the, the aging on that guitar, you know, uh, being almost 40 years old myself. Um, yeah. Yeah, actually, Where's I had, I had an old man problem? moment today that I, I forgot to mention earlier. <laughs> um, my old man moment today, I went outside. It's in Austria. It's very uh, icy here, and um, I, I slipped down the steps and fell on my ass. Oh no! <laughs> and my knee went sort of somewhere no. where my hip was, and my ankle went somewhere where my knee was, and oh. I sort of did a very poor. John Travolta impression and went, oh, and it was kind of like went all James Brown and then hobbled back into the house and led on the floor and said, I might need the hospital. <laughs> but I didn't. 
Oh, um, I'm yeah, so sorry to hear that. Yeah, are you, right. are you all right now? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, I could deserve some sympathy if I'm honest, but. Uh, all right, yeah. in chat, can we have some sympathy for Andy? Send him some strawberries. Sympathy vibes. Strawberries vibes. forever. <laughs> I think I get the feeling we need an official Guitar Stories podcast snack. Because I often get a bit snacky when we're podcasting. And I know the people in the live chat watching and, and joining in must also be rather snacky. And I saw some people having apples and things like that. That's, that's uh, maybe a bit crunchy for a microphone. <laughs> We've got Mike in. Mike's having an old moment most days. Mike's not old. <laughs> yeah, right after getting out of bed when you realize that your neck is oh, hurting and you can't do this. And uh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we're we're really you know we're really pushing the whole guitar stories podcast theme here by talking about being old men. Oh dear! <laughs> so I'm I mean, very happy for you. Forty years old. Very so it, happy it, it for you. It has seen a lot of things already. Yeah. And it's it's pretty cool to have such a almost ancient guitar in my hands. Steady, huh? Ancient. <laughs> I just love the figure. Look at that. I mean, I'm a sucker for plain tops. Okay, I I yeah. I don't really have a lot of love for flame top, if I'm honest. Gesundheit. Dankeschön. That was German. Yeah. What? Bitteschön. Uh, I, I don't much have much time for flame tops, if I'm honest. Stick a flame top and a plain top in front of me, and I'll take the plain top every time. And your yep. guitar yep. is beautiful. I had Thank a Washburn HB, HB35 that was very similar to that. Mm -hmm. but more glossy yeah, those, and absolutely. that was a great guitar and i kind of regret selling it but um you know some stay some go i always wondered where where those washburns were they rather uh hot, hot wound those pickups or were they also very jazzy voiced uh honestly i can't remember i just remember being good <laughs> <laughs> i did use it for, i did use it for blues rock so it All must right. have been quite puff style you know quite quite rocky um, mm. But it also cleaned up wonderfully on the neck pickup and, and did some, you know, roll the tone off slightly and got some beautiful bluesy stuff out of it. Um, All right. But yeah, uh, I, I see that I'm not alone on the old plain tops thing. I did get something this week, Dan, but it wasn't wasn't bought. But it is something okay. that I, I will promote if that's okay with you. Sure. Because it's a book. Ooh. And it's got a pedal that. from a little company called Ibanez on the front. Um, <laughs> it's the Stomp Box book. And this was sent to me by the guy that's produced it. So I will be doing a Guitar Geek book club review on it on the channel. But we're actually going to see me actually fail to open the book live on air. <laughs> God damn. Now we've got the ASMR. Ah, see, that was week. what the screwdriver was for. <laughs> oh, um, entertain yourselves for a moment while I struggle with some plastic. <laughs> so is this book has this book been like officially published it's not like a private this, no this is a real book that you can buy all right um, oh it smells amazing oh mm. that new book smell give that man a knife yes yeah, so this is the stomp box book as you can see i haven't opened it yet so um dan give me a number and i will turn to that page quite a lot of pages. 87 87 good choice i hope they've got page numbers <laughs> oh, oh, I've actually just found the, the Ibanez pedal. Hang on, let's... The AD80 and along the day. 87, did you say? Sorry. Oh, there's Eric yeah. Johnson. Looking at this and not showing you. Terrible, isn't it? 87, and then we'll play a game of whose effects pedal is that? Because all of these effects pedals are based on the famous user. Oh, this, this should be easy. Right. All right, here we go. It's the Pile Sound Talk Box. People in the chat... Ooh. Who is the most famous, or maybe not most famous, but fairly famous for having that? I have like two people in mind. Well, there's only one. Not Bon Jovi. <laughs> it's not Bon Jovi. <laughs> not Joe Walsh. Take, what's, your, what's your guess, Dan? Peter Frampton. Yay! Jason there you go. Got it. Dan got it. Peter Frampton, the Heil Sand. Talk box. The Jetsons. <laughs> What's going on there? <laughs> okay, somebody in the so, chat. This is fun. This is a fun game. I could do this for an hour. Um, someone so, give me a page so number. Come <laughs> on. Someone. 
So the book's basically like all the effects there. Like, like they refer to one specific artist that kind of shaped that or made that that sound like famous. One hundred pedals. Hang on, <clears throat> voiceover. One hundred pedals of the world's greatest guitarists. And I've Ooh. got Mike straight in there with number ninety-five. Quite close to eighty-seven. I thought someone would have gone for two hundred and something. So ninety-five. Mm -hmm. um, ninety-five. Please be someone I know. Uh, oh, hang on. Old Man Sen says, now do it with a cool announcer voice. I think you've, he's done that already. The <laughs> cool announcer voice. Oh, oh am I showing that? No. The Blackstone Appliances MOSFET Overdrive 2SV3. <sighs> That's quite the a weird one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not. Anyone know who that is? Give us some help. I mean, what I will say is that um, don't be upset because boys don't cry. <laughs> Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash is very famous for using the MOSFET overdrive. <laughs> it's Reeves. G I can't pronounce this guy's name. Reeves G Gabrels. G Gabrels. <sighs> yeah. So so Jason got it. it was Robert like Smith. It was cure. the Cure. I was I was referring yeah, to. Yeah. yeah. Hey, All right. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, can we can we do one more? But yes, vice versa, I would like to know what is uh, the TS10? Who who made the TS10 famous? Was it uh, either was John Frusciante? Guillaume Chanin. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can actually cross reference that. That'd be fun. If not, yeah. then they need to rethink this book. Maybe there's a content so. Did you know that I used to work at a kindergarten? So I, I was trained to do this. I actually received training to read books like this. <laughs> and I had to do I had to do an exam on reading a book like this. Awesome. You need strong arms to do that. You do. It's a strong little finger, Dan, if I'm honest, because it's just a little pinky that goes underneath the book like that. And that's a heavy book. Wow. Um, it's quite some advantage in playing the guitar because then you're using your pinky, which a lot of guitarists are not. Yeah, I'm, I'm mainly a sort of hold a book with a pinky kind of guy. All right. Okay. Um, okay. It is trickier with an afro because I can't see outside of my hair. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm, I'm ruining this. Again. I'm ruining this. Yeah. Um, yeah, the yeah. TS10. So TS10? I, don't, I don't even know if it's in there. I mean, there's. I'm not going to, you know, spend hours doing this. But let's take some guesses. Take some guesses. Who's most famous for the TS10? I think it's got to be. It's got to be John Mayer for the zeitgeist part of it. You know, he's very, very popular at the moment. It would be... Oh, there's a TS9. Uh, that would be probably Stevie Ray Vaughan, right? Correct. Stevie Ray Vaughan is the TS9. Um, I mean, but TS10 could also be John Frusciante from the Red, Red Hot Chili Peppers. It could. I think he used, he used the WA and he also used the TS10, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Oh, my, my, my Bluetooth earpiece is falling out. Dude, that's... Where's it going? Um, I don't know is the answer, but if someone wants to Google that, I'll happily read it. John Frisciati, the Ibanez wh 10 wa He's he's in there for that, so he probably won't be in there twice. Uh -huh. I'd be very surprised if John May is not in here, but this is not the best podcast material I can think of. Hang on a minute, the TS9's in there twice. There you Mike go. Mc Mike McCready and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Well, okay. Well, the TS9's in there twice, which makes it a TS18. <laughs> quick, Don't quick leak the 2021 just... stuff. I told you <laughs> Sorry. Not to leak the 2021 stuff. New for 2021, the Ibanez TS18, TS18 when you just can't get enough. <laughs> why do why should you buy the TS9 if you can have the TS18? Could you do a, a, a two TS9s in one box and call it the TS18? Actually, we had the Gemini. The Steve Vai signature pedal was two. Was it two circuits? Well, it was like two independent channels at least. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, you can have that idea. I just need. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eric in the chat is saying that John Mayer probably has the clon. I don't know. So. Here we go. Homework for you guys. Go and buy that book because it seems like a lot of fun and exactly the kind of thing that uh, I can read and get all excited about. 
And I will do a, another live reading on the channel. I don't know if it'll be live, but I'll do another reading through of that book on the channel. We'll look at pictures and I'll do an overhead camera and all sorts of stuff. Hmm, so interesting. How, 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 did you, how did you get to know the book? Like, was it recommended to you or? Um, I did another book called Pedal Crush, which just happens to be up here. Oh, what a coincidence. What a coincidence. Uh, Pedal Crush with a foreword by some bloke that plays guitar it's called Steve Vai. And that's a, I wouldn't say similar book, but it is, it's more like history of pedals and what they do and the different types of pedals. All right. So there we go. So it's, it's different types of pedals. Whereas Stompbox is, as we've discovered tonight, uh, famous 100 pedals, 100 pedals of the world's greatest guitarists. Nice. So, yeah. um, cool. so I'm already excited. That seems like a fun book. I can't wait to uh, to have a couple of hours with that. <laughs> <laughs> and see, what I'm going to do right. is steal, steal all the information, you see, and pretend that I'm uh, knowledgeable and intelligent. <laughs> That's the real intelligence, Dan. Yeah, smart repeater. Yeah. Smart repeater, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, they're on the floor. They're heavy. My goodness. So uh, yeah, that All was right. my that was my sort of don't tell my wife thing. Even though I could tell her because she really wouldn't you... care. <laughs> so that's not a typical coffee book table material, right? No, I mean I don't have a t coffee table. It, it's a stage for my kids to dance on. So you know, you don't don't put anything <laughs> on the coffee table. It'll it'll become part of a show. <laughs> Welcome to the pedal show. Oh well. Ah. We should start. See what I did there? Yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna try not to excite all the people in the chat by taking my shirt off. There we go. <laughs> right. Um, well, I got sent. I got sent a cool new shirt from Martin Miller. He has those cool fancy shirts that say Martin, Benny, um, and so on. <laughs> and um, I tried to put it on, and then I re uh, figured out it's size S, and I couldn't put it on. So that was my shaming moment of the day. Size S for <laughs> shame. Shame, yeah. <laughs> shame on you if you can't wear it. But I try to wear the stuff, you know, that I fit in and not the, the stuff that I want to wear, you know. <laughs> so. uh, well, well, just can you not write to him or can you, you know, lose some weight? Or, I mean, you're not that heavy of a guy, so probably not much weight to lose. Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's a tough decision to make. Well, we'll see about that. Valerius another, just said in the episode. chat that it'll fit her, by the way. Um, which oh, leads me on to a question. Did Valeria get her hoodie that she won on the podcast? Nope, because the DHL declined because they're currently not shipping uh, that size to Chile. And I was about to send you a long email and trying to figure out different ways. So that's on my to-do list. That got declined. They I have it nicely packed. Wait, wait a sec. Okay, I'll wait, but I, I don't understand why they won't ship that size do you mean that size of hoodie or that size of box no, no 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 like they at the moment they only ship like big boxes so this is don't the put hoodie. don't put her address on on the internet then oh sorry sorry so valeria and uh, it already got postage on it yeah oh but I don't accept it, so I have to wait until they give clearance for those kind of shipments. Because at the moment, I think they only ship like very big boxes, and they cost 100, 120 euros. And all the smaller things, they are excluded at the moment due to COVID. So it's it's sitting here, and as soon as it can go, it will reach you, Valeria. Sorry for the delay. I don't believe him. I wouldn't believe him, Valeria, if I were you. Yeah, <laughs> I do believe it. Look at his face. How can you not trust that face? All right, Dan, it is time for gear of the week. Gear of the week. Um, we've got two pieces of gear this week. It's quite a slow week on gear that I liked. Um, so maybe I've missed something or maybe I just wasn't paying attention. But um, we've got first up is a looper pedal, uh, which is this kind mm -hmm. of thing that's going around uh, that's a GIF that's selected. I probably should have rethought that. There it is, the Looper IB. <laughs> and let me just get rid of that chat for a moment. There we go. So the Looper IB is a Looper pedal that is um, connected or can be connected to your phone and using an app and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 
so you I don't know if you can use it without the app, but I'm not a massive fan of gear that you have to use an app with. Um, no. I'm not I'm not tech uh, technophobe. I love tech, but also I like to keep my hands on my guitar. So yep. looking at that, it's got, <laughs> it's got Wi-Fi and, and all sorts of stuff. This is part of the app that's on screen right now. If you're watching the video, um, it's a GIF that cycles around. The video that I saw demonstrating this looper um, was interesting. Hmm. Um, it's currently on Kickstarter, so I'm thinking that there'll be a, a series of videos um, coming out. But what I think you can do with these with these foot switches, there are four foot switches on the pedal. You can assign them to different functions. I think. I think that's one of the beauty of it. All right. So you can basically program it to your needs. What I like is the bulletproof stomp box. Bulletproof stomp box. That's quite the USB. Box. Yeah, it's yeah. 24 bits up to 192 kilohertz. That's that's impressive. So it's not just some MP3 nope. looper pedal. Not that there's anything wrong with with the smaller looper pedals that I have. They're they're perfectly fine. Um, but it's nice to boast audio fidelity of that high level. Definitely, yeah. I like, can you see the yeah, guitar? That, I think that would be oh, we missed it. Break. Wait for it to come back around again. The picture of the guitar that's in that one photo is hilarious. It looks a bit like a Marauder. Um, <laughs> looks like someone that plays keyboards drew a guitar. <laughs> I mean, isn't it a V in, in their diagram? It's like a Red, or Randy Rhodes V? I don't know. It's like, like a Marauder V, Randy Rhodes. I don't know. Let's, let's, let's just sit silent until it comes back around again. Yeah. It's taking so long. Yeah, I, th I thought it would be, be here by now. This is quite embarrassing. <laughs> there it is. There it is. See? There it is. Yeah. It's only got three yeah. machine heads. And um, <laughs> it, it is rather Randy Rhodes, isn't it? But not quite. Yeah. So it's like a solid body ukulele. Yes, which I, I have one of. Yeah. Still enjoying that a lot. Um, OK, uh, so that's the Looper I. Not much information on that apart from it's on a Kickstarter. Uh, I don't know if there's space in the world for something like that. I hope so. I quite like freaking It's like a, a smart hub to connect everything that you got, like a guitar, a smartphone, a microphone, or whatever. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Yeah, it's it's. But like you said, every everything that is that is app based is always difficult because you know what's the long term use of that? As soon as you know iOS gets outdated or the app is no longer supported, it's kind of waste. Yeah. Electronic waste. Yeah. All it's, right. Uh, so we also have a new guitar. Yeah, we do. Yeah, it's right. it's a, a collaboration between that man mm -hmm. and the guitar company. <laughs> <laughs> He's just coming home for a day of working, working at the factory, and oh, there it is. So it's a collaboration between Gordon Smith uh, and Black Star, and it's a travel guitar. So it's on screen now. So we've got a. It's a short scale, twenty point something inches, um, one pickup, which looks rather funky, and uh, mm -hmm. a string through body with a, a TOS style bridge. TOM style. Yeah, reminds me a little bit. Of the Nick Nick Huber Crowdster, <laughs> yeah, with the pick guard, you yeah, know, it's got the curves. It's, it's kind of nice looking. Twenty point seven inch scale length means nineteen frets, easy to access. Why not? It's almost called, should should feel almost like a regular guitar. It's called the Carry On. Well, <laughs> um, oh, wow, yeah, I mean, it, it will it, perfectly fit into a suitcase. I don't know what. I, I like it. I like small guitars because they look ridiculous on me and they're a lot of fun to play. Um, <laughs> I'd really like to try that. I like the design. I think the design um, is, I don't want to say unique because we just said about the Krautster, but it's its something that isn't predictable. Mm. Um, and it doesn't look like a toy necessarily. No. Some, some of the traveler guitars, they, they, they look like, yeah. yeah. The, bla the black with the chrome looks absolutely sexy. Uh, and the white as well. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit of old Dan Electro as well, sort of old Supro guitars. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you. Just looking in our document, I'll see if I can get some more information because I. Uh, 20, uh, I can't say that word. Okumi. You, you're good at that word. Okumi. Yeah, okumi. that's a mahogany style word. Yeah. So, it's, it's, it's rather. It's not, it's not the most uh, expensive wood, but it's also not plywood. It's it's like a quality sign if it's if they're using okume. I think for especially in the acoustic segment, it's it's got very good acoustic um, um, uh, attributes. Yeah, 
very good resonance we might see some guitars from from you in 2021 maybe you know featuring that wood no we already had okume it's a like i said it's already a very good equivalent um for mahogany because you know if you don't a lot of mahogany gets shipped around. You've got African mahogany that's being processed in the States or being processed in Japan. But if you've got local wood that in terms of density and and, and also, you know, ability to, to resonate well mm. is pretty similar to that, why not using like local wood? Everyone is, you know, trying to make a point in being more sustainable, but we carry the woods around the world, you know. Yeah, it's, it's that's I, a I whole other that. subject, of course. But um, yeah, yeah. But yeah I, I'm with you on that. It's... Who, I can't remember. I was talking to Andy Powers from Taylor, just to drop a name there, you know. And um, <laughs> we were just chatting, you know, as we do regularly. And uh, he was talking <laughs> about the, the woods that were famous, like the older, the mahogany, the maple, all, you know, all our classic woods. Um, yeah. They're only classic because they were made by someone who lived next to them and made guitars and instruments out of them. So it's there exactly you what you're saying is that now these other woods are not worse than. It's just that the woods that were used to became famous because they were used because they were local woods originally. Um, no. Yeah, so that's interesting. And if you would, if you would AB them, I, I really doubt if you would AB. I mean, not you, because you probably have the best ears one could wish for, but if I would AB a Yukume made guitar in a uh, acoustic are. that's made of mahogany, nah. <laughs> They're under there somewhere. The fro is growing, by the way. I was thinking that early on when I saw you, I was like, "Whoa, you know, is it still the man controlling the fro, or the fro controlling the man?" Well, thanks for bringing it up, actually, Dan, because I've recently changed my shampoo, and uh, <laughs> I'm extremely happy with the results. <laughs> I was uh, I was shampooing and conditioning because I was suffering from rather a dry fro, which is one of the worst fros oh. you can have. And then when yeah. I was waking up, it was just really flat. And that's the last thing you want is a flat fro. So I, I've switched. I won't mention them because they're not sponsoring the show. But um, it's a volumizing shampoo that's doing me very well. <laughs> thanks, thanks for bringing it up. My pleasure. <laughs> All right. So these guitars, how much are they? Two nine nine, And it comes with is that dollars? a gig bag. No, euros. No, pounds. Euros. All right, so, so maybe three fifty ish. Yeah, I'd say between I'd say three forty, three fifty ish. Yeah. But no, should be less than. Oh, what? Oh, I hang on, no. Brexit. I've got no clue. What's, three three thirty. What's a pound like? There's thirty. Okay. Uh, I'd, I'd, my my gut says three thirty. I have nothing on which to base that apart from gut feeling. Um, All right. Okay. Yeah. So I like it. I, I mean, think, I think the design's cool. I'd love to f have a go on it, of course. I'm worried that the neck is slim because I'd want to feel something. I actually want to feel a guitar, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. Oh, pressing buttons. Yeah, Black Star. There we go. Let's bring that live chat back because someone just talked about me having a beard. And I have to disappoint them <laughs> by saying that I am incapable of growing said beard. Uh, and therefore, I'm very envious of Dan's face. <laughs> that's the first time someone said that i envy your oh, face nice. yeah <laughs> you've got a nice face oh by the way i i just checked it's like 369 euros no. for the guitar alone and and the pack the standard pack uh costs 419 and what does that come with an amp as well a little fly uh, amp i think with a yeah yeah with an i think with an amp and a gig bag and that's a some, lot of money you know that's a lot of money. Some case can. Yep. Also, it begs yep, the question, yep. is, um, is 2020 the correct year to be releasing a travel guitar? <laughs> well, timing could be better, that's for sure. Yep. I don't know. I, I like it. I Especially like since, since you're probably not going to take the guitar to, let's say, play a trade show, like go to take the guitar and play at NAMM or so. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Before you say that, wait, Dan. It's time for the main course. We should be going. We are live, I think. I think we're live. Um, and awesome. I need to. I just bought a new power supply for this darn computer. I need to buy a new something. In fact, I, uh, <laughs> off, off topic right now, I think we're back. Um, I, I bought uh, a MacBook, which I'd love to talk about in the future at some point. 
Um, All right, that will be cool. So we see the chat again. All right. Uh, Purple Rocket, I've been on stage with Babia Massad. It was a wonderful experience, but I did not have a throw at the time. I was throwless. Uh. Anyway, Dan, um, I think you did an amazing segue. I think you did an amazing segue. Yeah, I know. What was it again? Yep. Um, something about. Uh... Would you take a? Uh, would you buy a traveler guitar if you don't have to? If you have no chance to take it to a trade show like a Nam or something well, similar. I'd have to say, Dan, no Nam, was... no problem. No Nam, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> That was the working title for this episode. And that's a good question because it's kind of a tricky question. No name, no problem. I mean, uh, from for you as a YouTuber, a influencer kind of guy who's working with a lot of companies producing like music and, and releasing gear demos, how do you feel about that? I feel like I could probably buy a new house. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, firstly, my initial reaction is that I'm I'm sad that... Firstly, sad that I'm stuck uh, at home, and and I enjoy trade shows for more than. I think the real reason for trade shows is is getting together and relationship building. Um, of course, you're announcing products and and getting products from the brands to the the public and and getting them to spend their hard earned cash, but also a lot of deals are done at trade shows when it's just a case of, oh yeah yeah we should work together. It's so good to see you. You know that kind of coffee water what's it called the water fountain conversation or whatever that is water cooler there we go thank you the water cooler um, conversation okay <laughs> yeah the sort of when when the work stops that's when the real conversations happen you know yeah um so my initial reaction my my first thing to say is that i'm sad that the social part won't happen from a youtuber's point of view Brands need a way to get um, products announcements out, and uh, I seem to be in one of the right places at the right time. Mm. Uh, yeah. What What's your take on it? Uh, well, I'm pretty much on the same page like you. I, I think one of the main aspects of the Nam show was, you know, to mingle and, and meet other people and, and really, you know, get to know other people too. I mean, I'm I'm kind of fresh in the industry, and and you're also not like a veteran who's already like 30 years collaborating with the brands. So it's kind of always been a unique experience in meeting new people like Anthony Garone from last week. You know, if if, if you're you know strolling around Nam show with Gemma Jura and she, you know. Let, you know, connects you with other people that she knows, then you just all of a sudden expand your network and, it, you know, it just explodes during one NAM. And if you've done several NAMs, it's like, oh, well, hey, hey, hey. And you meet all those people that you, you know, try to remember all those names. And sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. But <laughs> it's so great to see all familiar faces and, and, and meet again because it's for most of the people, it's like that one time in the year where you get all to meet those those guys and it's also like great if you have all the industry grades there you have all those kind of legacy artists like vi and cetriani and those those guys uh, i always have my fanboy mo moment whenever i um I run into andy timmons uh, it's like it's, it's pretty cool but on the other hand i mean the the flip side is that as a as a company i think nam is not really an, and uh to be honest, I think that, yeah, I think that COVID has just been like a, uh, like a driving force in in kind of re making a lot of companies realizing that kind of inconvenient reality, because mm -hmm. it's so cool, especially in January, to go to California and enjoy sun and, you know, get out of the cold of of, of Europe's cold, um, but. It's it's not really necessary. I mean, nowadays you've got you've got online meetings. You can. Uh, with social media and, and YouTubers, you can spread the word much easier than having a big booth and spend tens of thousands of dollars on, on releasing products at a small space for a very select amount of people. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, usually at hindsight, you, you, you can identify those kind of paradigm shifts pretty easily. But when you're in the middle of it, it's kind of hard to say, okay, how big is that now? Is that really a thing or is it just like a... You know, something that might change over time. And a lot of companies, they announce, okay, we're not going to this show or NAM is not happening. So for this year, we are going to release products like this. But my basic question would be, 
are they coming back to the previous status or are they sticking with it? And my guess, like my gut feeling tells me that a lot of companies, they might go back to NEM, but not in the same dimensions and not with the same importance for their release portfolio or release schedule. I agree. I just didn't want to talk over you. I was really taking in information you just imparted. It's it's really interesting to hear that from someone like you and, and to step out of our friendship right now. Thank you for sharing that, you know, knowing that it's part of your job. And um, and now we can step back into the friendship and say hello. <laughs> um, uh -huh. But I remember working, yeah, in and out, just so smooth. <laughs> I remember um, working with you, like not knowing you. I mean, well, uh, let's not go through the history, history of our friendship, but one of the first times we worked together was when I was working for Tolman at NAM 2019, Winter NAM. And you organized for me to interview Andy Timmons, for example. Mm -hmm. A and, lovely interview, um, by the way. So one of my favorite interviews, right after the Satchel interview. Thank you. Thank you very much. He, in fact, the Andy Timmons interview when he gave me uh, the sixpence that he was uh, famous for using in the Bohemian Rhapsody cover that he did, which I actually yeah. have here, and I'm not going to show you because it's underneath a lot of stuff, and I don't want to break the computer again. But um, yeah, I mean, there's 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 an energy about a trade show. There's a, there's a, a vibe. There's a um, there's an intensity. What uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Immediacy. So mm -hmm. when I'm at a trade show, not speaking as a veteran now, but speaking purely as a as a, a pretty new boy, you haven't when those doors open at nine or, or whatever, you have until six PM to do your job. Um and it's not just NAM that I'm talking about. Of course I've I've been to Guitar Summit, I've done the guitar show in Birmingham. Um I'm probably forgetting a few, but um it, what I love about it is because of the nature of my job of sitting in this room and turning on cameras and, and talking to the wall, um, I can pretty much manage myself. But a trade show, it's it's like, okay, go. It's go time. We've got to go and earn some bucks, you know, or have some fun, you know. And I love that about this part of, of my job. So if it doesn't go back to that, I'm going to miss that sorely. Um. I'm going to miss the people. I'm going to miss the new experiences, the connectivity, you know. Um, I'm with you. I don't think it will go back to what it was. However, I, I think it's going to come back in some shape or form. The people I worry about are the, the new brands. So I'd like to talk about that, if we may, the, the sort of the, the new starters who who may have shared a booth together and shared the expense of going to a trade show and maybe maybe can't afford because you know uh, here's some news youtubers get paid for what we do mm -hmm. and therefore um some of us give away freebies and, and we all do i, I oh, sorry um, a, a big s slice of guitar youtubers of course do freebies and i like to help small pedal companies for example and i really want to build the European uh, pedal community because they have a massive one in, in the US and I think I want the same thing over here and I just worry that the small people the small builders or the new builders won't it's risky you know to, to invest money when you don't have a lot and I think people would say it would s I've really dug myself in a hole here hang on um <laughs> By booking a booth and sharing the cost at somewhere like NAM, you have an almost uh, guaranteed chance of foot traffic, you know, people actually seeing mm -hmm. your stuff. By booking a YouTuber or YouTuber channels that you can afford, there's a lot more guesswork. Mm -hmm. And as a, as a, a person who does this as a job, um, some people just say, I can't afford you. And, I, and then I knock my price right down and they still can't afford it. And like, okay, now, now we're silly. I just rather do it for free. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It starts to get offensive for both of us and embarrassing for both of us when, um, when it's a, a price that someone can't afford. Yeah, I hear. So to round that point off, I I really enjoy helping the smaller companies, and um, I will give them a freebie, for example, in the interest that when they start making some money, then they come to me. And I'm one of their go-to guys. You know, it's absolutely a, a business move. Um, yeah, I hear. You. And I'm worried about those kind of people not getting the the platform they they want. 
or deserve or you know what i mean it just yeah, sure, com- sure. yeah companies like fender ibanez gibson and marshall blah 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 all these big companies yeah you'll get youtube you've got budget for that mm-hmm. but what happens to the small and the, and the newcomers yeah that's a good point on the other hand i mean you said that you have a lot of foot traffic during the show but it's also you can easily be overseen as a brand if you've got that small kind of booth maybe sharing it with another brand how many like real business contacts are going to see you whereas if you let's say you are going to an event like uh, hennings uh, gear street then all of a sudden you are on eye level and this is what i really like about these approaches like what we've seen with at the warwick already at uh, uh what was it called not not Get, gearhead Gitcon. university gitcon yeah at gitcon or gearhead university and also even more at on hennings uh, on hennings uh, show um, or event that all the brands that were there they were basically talking to each other at eye level it wasn't like okay i'm the small you know kma or whatever audio and i'm i'm the big uh, synergy or the big ibanez guy it's like you you're meeting yourself at a very personal level and all the brands are kind of equal at least mm-hmm. how much exposure they get and you know how how many videos they get as as the output so i really like that kind of approach it's a um not a, a pretty fair way you know you you rather w- work with people that you have a relationship to and yet you want around to have around you for a couple mm-hmm. a period of time instead of just working uh with corporate suits and with people that you've never met before and and don't really have an interest in you because yeah. this is more like that kind of community building approach. And, and I really like this because, like you said, I mean, we're not selling fridges and we're not selling tobacco. We are selling music and music is something that is very passionate and very emotional. So if if you don't like the people behind the company, I find it personally difficult. So uh, it's, it's hard to invest uh, emotion into something that you actually don't feel emotional about and that's kind of my my bottom line is I have to believe in what I'm doing and I'd be lying if I said I have to be a businessman as well of course I've got to feed my kids and put food on the table etc etc and mm-hmm. fuel in, fuel in the Ferrari etc uh, but, but <laughs> my best work comes from when I love what I'm doing you know yep. however um and I agree with you exactly what you said. You can get overlooked at, at places like NAM, and you can even get overlooked. Um, like I went to the guitar show in Birmingham, a tiny little place, um, relatively speaking. Uh, I could have done. I did two days there. I could have done four days. You know, I was going to say six. Yeah. That's a bit too much. I didn't even know there was an upstairs with acoustics, and it was. <laughs> if you just walked through there, you could walk the whole show and be back out the door in 10 minutes if you had one you know one you could see everything but just as a glance and yeah, yeah. Uh, making videos i could have done with double the time i had and i still managed to skip people and friends you know, and people that i knew online and i, I still i just couldn't make it and we'd see each other you know what it's like you see each other like hello and, and you can't <laughs> get there um yeah. however with the with the foot traffic stuff um like as the guy with the camera the people that really win at trade shows are the ones that go, "Oi, come here!" Yeah. Oh, hi, Andy. Oh, I've, I've seen you. I, and and that's the thing. That's the control you have. Um, if, as a person, you're willing to take your business and your marketing and your um, your strategy right into your hands and go out and j- grab someone, then you're yeah. probably going to succeed more so than you would if you just sat on your booth. You know. So I, I like the control that a brand has when there's a social um, event. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with, with that Henning's event. Uh, some brands, like the first one um, that I didn't go to, so I can't really speak truth, but what I've heard, the brands that succeeded most were the brands that met the YouTubers early and chatted with them and you know created relationships. You're not gonna mm-hmm. get anywhere by sitting back and expecting people to do just do stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, which is very interesting because I can t- I can say with absolute accuracy that uh, Nick Huber, who makes some of the finest guitars I've ever touched in my life, he was brand new to social media and YouTube and s- using social media as a way to connect with your customers and potential customers. And he was so fresh and so green and so wonderful. 
and by the second day he was really like okay I, I know what I'm doing now I'm interested in you know getting there so he wasn't sitting back but he just it was a first experience for him so his business is not a small business but mm -hmm. it's also not uh, one of the big big names you know it's a it's a boutique brand so yeah I just love what I love about trade shows is the control that one can take of one's business like Sorry, I know I'm monopolizing the conversation here, but um, I have a lot of things to say from experience. And that is, as a YouTuber, I remember going to my first Messe, which was Music Messe in, in, in Germany, and being so nervous and thinking, why would these people want to talk to me? I was not the person you're seeing right now. I was a guy, f still, you know, self-doubt and what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing everything for the first time, all alone, you know. Uh, with a tripod and a tiny little camera and um <laughs> and thinking why would people want to talk to me i knew nothing about everything you know mm -hmm. um i just had a passion and that's what i love about it i love that energy and when i see someone like that like i'm pretty nervous yeah me too you want to make a video yeah you know it, it's <laughs> there's always something to find and and i just love people so i'm i'm missing that and i will miss that if uh yeah. these events don't come back yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a part that even like Skyping or WhatsApping or Zoom meetings or cannot replace. And that's like that that social component of really seeing each other and you know, also having a beer at the bar after the show. I mean, that's basically someone was pointing out that, that uh, brands are not just overlooked, but sometimes it's also also their only chance to talk to retailers and stuff. But honestly, how many of those deals are being made during the trade show day and how many of those deals are being made at the bar, you know, when you approach the right people that you've yes. probably seen before quickly, but then you go into more, a deeper conversation, a much deeper conversation. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's part of the game. And like I said, I think that might be a paradigm shift nowadays that you've got to approach people differently. And also as a, as a small brand, in order to not be overlooked, you've got to be very creative in how you market your stuff, how the product looks like. What kind of, you know, what's your USP of the product and, and also how you approach dealers. You know, if you want to convince a handful of dealers to carry your product, how do you convince them that this is the product they definitely need and going to sell? I, mean, I have to it? bring up what, yeah. um, what Sarang has just put in the chat. He said there's a real charm in what we're talking about, like going around a farmer's market or a really old traditional little village market. And that's exactly right. So... It might be. And this is what's what was most weird for me when I first started doing this was like seeing the big guitar names, but then actually meeting people, you know, and, and the people just being people and uh -huh. and getting inside the, the brands that I, you know, the big brands. And it's, I'm not just talking about the big brands, but it's so accessible. It's right there. And if you want it, all you have to do is have the right badge or ask the right questions or show the right energy. And it's there for the taking. And, Absolutely. you know, there are artists walking around and, and, and you can meet these people. And of course, people are busy. But of course, if you I met uh, um, uh, Andy Crowley, the guy we had Andy guitar, just because I was exhausted. Uh, and I was sat on a roundabout in California, I was sat on this roundabout in California, or lying down on, on a roundabout in California. And then I see this face that I recognize and he recognizes me and we go, ah, and he runs over to me and I'm like, this is amazing. He's such a hero of mine. That can't happen if you're not out there doing it. You know, if you're not out there trying to grab life. And the main thing I'm going to miss is hugs. I'm a big hugger and I get mm -hmm. a lot of energy from sharing a hug. And I miss that totally. I think that's to go back to the beginning of the podcast when we were talking about a little bit about depression. That's definitely affected me this year. Not the ability mm -hmm. to, to physically connect with someone. Yep, um, I hear. Yeah, it's, it's and talking about like when the deals are made at the bar and things like that, when the real business is done. Uh, there's a company from the UK called Pedal Patch, and it's Phil, and he does um, uh, he does um, solderless patch cables. I liked his product. I thought it was a good idea. Um, of course, I wanted to make a video with him, and then at the bar that night, we just happened to get in chatting, and he won a pizza <laughs> cool <laughs> just, just so, like every time every night or something i'm not sure how it worked but the hotel would give a pizza away to one of their guests and it just happened that he walked in and said you are a winner and um <laughs> it gets better he shared that pizza with me 
um because we were chatting at the time and and then it was one of the most amazing pizzas i've ever had against all the odds i don't know and it was a hotel bar um <laughs> not an italian restaurant not in italy it was in birmingham uk and it is still one of the best pizzas i've ever had in my life i will never forget phil i will never forget his company uh, i'm doing a video for him it's going to be fun and i know that I will not be able to help myself but putting extra energy into that video because of that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, what you just said is absolutely correct. And um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's the love and the hope and the joy that brings everybody together. And now the more we talk about it, the more upset I'm getting. <laughs> Man. I know. And just at this exact time, Chris Barocci shows up in the chat and offers hugs. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me sad, Come, man. Let's do a virtual hug to everyone. Like I'm hugging you now. Yeah. Oh. Oh, and Nicole Millick is also here. My goodness. My goodness, my goodness. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nicole, I miss you too. I love you all. And the people I haven't met, I love you. Dan, I love you. I also, you know, love Bulldog music gear, just to be professional for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and they were back in the business game. So, <laughs> it's like, what, what, why we're we doing the podcast? I mean, it's pretty much the same. We love talking about gear. We love the community. And we love those kind of 40, 50 people that show up all the time and, and comment on stuff and kind of build it from there and, and trying to interact with people instead of just, you know, trying to desperately be big or be corporate or whatever. It's just really... You know, doing what we like and, and, and trying to make a living from that. And uh, that's mm. the most beautiful thing. I mean, and same yeah, goes I mean, for the trade shows. Let's keep it 100. Let's keep it real. Bulldog Music Gear are sponsoring this podcast because we have a few costs to create the podcast. Um, yep. We're not doing this to make money. I mean, yes, I am making money and I'm missing McKeel's super chats. You know, that, that's <laughs> very rude that he hasn't turned up and sent us two bucks. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, that's the reason we're doing this and and i don't know it's it's really upset me to talk about this i didn't think it would it, it's hit me uh as a quite a surprise yeah um, I can and, tell. and how dare nicole and chris barocci and guillaume be in the chat and all the rest of them <laughs> that's just made it worse yeah these are all the characters that you love to see at the at the trade show. And to me, it was all also interesting, you know, to be able to connect those guys, you know, to me, like Lee Anderton and to me, Paul Gilbert and, and those kind of guys, because you randomly run into the, those guys occasionally and they are super nice. They are just human beings that go to the restrooms like you do. And uh, I think it's kind of, it puts everything a little bit into a, a, a more natural and more... Uh, how, how can I put it? Real, like more realistic relation or, or proportion, and uh, that's that's what I really like about that. I mean, it's 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 really hard to to see that everyone is kind of, you know, trying to have fun and making the most out of that. I think that's that's why trade shows are so special. But mm. I'm also saying that uh, we'll definitely see a different scenery once the whole COVID situation is under control. I'm super sure that a lot of companies will pull out from them or at least be there in a much smaller scale or kind of reschedule their uh, product launches so that NAM is no longer the center of the universe when it comes to the new releases. And um, because it's working and we've seen that in previous weeks, like last week we talked about Boss's Tone Bender that is due in Q2 2021, which is a long time to go still. And also, like, we do it with Ibanez. We're releasing products every month now. So it's a uh, it's a little bit a, a different approach to things, but I don't necessarily think it's bad. I just think, like, also the, the whole community approach and how people mingle with each other will change, maybe to smaller events, maybe to more specific, more niche activities. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, you get a lot more work. But it's not said that you know there will never ever be a, a similar event, but maybe in a smaller scale. Let's say like Henning did, or let's do the Austrian Geek Show, for instance. I don't know. <laughs> I never well, know. What's there happening. is a, an Austrian uh, music messer, a music uh, trade show. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not not big by any um, by any sense of the of the term, but uh, I think it was every two years, if I'm correct. Yep, yep. And yep. Uh, I went there once, and before I before I had a YouTube channel, before I had a, a dog in the fight, um, and 
it was mainly blast music, mainly brass music and, and, and trumpets and, and really loud stuff at the Yamaha um, stage. So <laughs> I had a good fun time. Um, but I went there totally as, a, as an appreciator of what was going on. And I remember being uh, so penniless, like, you know, let's be let's be real. I'm not got money to throw around. But then I was absolutely penniless. <laughs> And there was a ukulele that was 110 euros. And I really loved it. It was a ukulele banjo. And I love this little thing. And I thought, I can't afford it. And I can't, or I can't justify buying it, you know? So I even missed out on the, you know, the, the, the punter side of the trade show. Um, yeah. Just digging myself deeper and deeper into sadness here. Dan. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I love that little ukulele banjo. Although... <laughs> It probably saved my family for me being a ukulele banjo player. Fair enough. <laughs> I heard a, a great quote, which I've actually added to my email signature um, uh -huh. from Mark. I think I'm pretty sure it was Mark Twain. And he said, a gentleman is someone who knows how to play the banjo and doesn't. <laughs> so I, I think that's brilliant. That's one of my favorite quotes. Uh, yeah. My quote that I'm misquoting. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, let's talk about online trade shows mm -hmm. and um there's one that happened recently guitar summit uh tried uh an online trade show it had mixed reviews and, and mixed levels of of content but what they were doing was i'm gonna say quite brave and quite pioneering yep. and um i didn't catch any of the content if i'm honest um <laughs> I think what they did was rather brave. And I, I think that I'm being very careful what I'm saying that because I know it didn't go as well as they'd wanted it to. Um, I'm hoping that Dan was going to jump in there, but he's not. He's just letting me dig my own grave and <laughs> climb in. Well, I, I yeah. watched quite quite a bit of the content. And I got to say the content itself was, was high quality. Um, I think as a online user, you're kind of used to have all that stuff available on demand. It's, it's pretty much the same with the podcast. I mean, we've got those kind of, like I said, 20, 30 or 40 people that are watching it every week on every Tuesday and they tune in and, you know, they are kind of on time and, and chat with us. But there's a much broader group of people that are consuming that stuff afterwards on their way to work and um, whenever they have time in the bathtub or whatever. So, and, and that's kind of you're used to Netflix and, and Amazon. So you want to have that content being available whenever you want it and not sitting in front of your PC uh, when you have like alternatives, like in Germany, like Bundesliga football or, or you know, your eight o'clock crime movie or whatever. So that's kind of a, an approach. I think it was a little bit, it was super brave and I like the pioneering approach, yeah. but uh, one of the drawbacks was definitely the lack of um, um, availability of content at, at any time. It was more like a, moderated kind of live stream mm. kind of thing you know with, with some pre-recorded stuff um but like i said before the content itself you got to check that out for instance henning fleischleiter the blues guy giving you lessons on how to play his songs with some you know great stories that he told and this just like those the, those kind of pearls in the program that you don't want to miss so um it will be interesting to see what they take from from their web summit because i think there were a lot of ingredients that they could apply to a regular trade show like having a a guy who's strolling across the the guitar summit and, and doing some some kind of live activities that is on top of what they do at, at the trade show on the spot so you have that like real life event and people going sure. you know in, into the into the halls and checking out the booths but they also have that that social media and online component where you can attract a wider audience and even grow your target group internationally, because not everyone naturally can come to can come to Germany and spend that. Oh, kind so, of money. so you're saying uh, operate a trade show and also offer some online content, some live streaming. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Do, and do yeah, uh, like such live stream workshops and and you know have yeah. have someone like like an Andy. Uh, go through the halls and check out all the uh, all the companies and that exhibit their stuff and, and you know kind of narrow down what what is hot during guitar summit so a lot of potential is there for sure Absolutely. it's a great show um and everything's a learning experience there's no such thing as as mistakes unless you don't learn from them you know and on cliches like that but uh, <laughs> um yeah i i 
I, I loved Guitar Summit. It's one of the best weekends of my life ever, as you know, any guitar event is. Um, but as a as a person who works online, um, I know how hard it is to be heard above the noise. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing when you um, when one sells uh, a ticket to an uh, to an event, then the person who buys said ticket is very likely that they will attend the event. Yeah, no different to being in a band and putting a Facebook event on and saying, "Hey, my band's playing at the local bar tonight," and and a hundred people say, "Going, we're going to the, the show," and then two people turn up. You know, there's no there's no ownership of that decision. And with content, as you said, being available 24 seven, and people can watch it anytime. Why would someone dedicate themselves to that time slot? I yeah. just noticed off topic completely, I've just noticed, Dan, you've not gone small one point in this in this conversation. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, it. everybody? And somehow it's it means that I'm not having to do that part of my job, which which is you know nice. I'm not having to worry about clicking buttons, and I can actually just talk over you and talk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, yeah. So I, I gain no I gain no joy from. Um, <laughs> I can't. Sorry. I'm sorry. Not come on. So I'll make Dan small again. Sorry, that's from the chat. I take no joy from when something doesn't go as well as someone hopes it does. But I know how hard it is to um, to be heard above the noise in a world of unlimited possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. So, and like I said, it, it could be a, like a good lesson to Im implement some of of the the good parts of the web summit for the for the actual like real. Mm. Uh, event in germany in mannheim so yeah looking forward to that and and uh, there, there have been other uh, online events like the guitar.com live event live stream weekend that was also kind of okay-ish so it someone was ha someone has to be the first you know someone has to do it yeah. first someone has to try these things yeah so yeah very brave um i just i just hope it spreads positivity and uh, I hope they get some some props for for trying something. Um, I think so too. And I, I feel guilty now for not having supported it. I've just realised that uh, I didn't help at all. Um, <laughs> sorry if you're watching. <laughs> but you would for next like uh, Guitar Summit 2021, Andy stands by. So, <laughs> for the right money, I'll do it. <laughs> um, Dan, I, I see that your eyes are getting a little droopy and your mouth is getting a little yawny. However, okay. um, we haven't. So? Yeah, I, I mean, if you if you're good to keep going, I'm good. I'm just I'm, I'm worried about your health, you know. Um, <laughs> and of course, Grogu is sort of sitting over there and he's he's looking at me with these big dark eyes and he wants to be spoken about. So. Would it be okay, Dan, if we moved on from our main topic and talked about our real main topic, which is the yeah, Mandalorian? Absolutely. <laughs> if you please roll our intro for that section. Um, Mandalorian, Mandalorian, it's got stuff and things from Star Wars. It's the best thing to happen to George Lucas, even though he wasn't anything to do with it. It's Mando <laughs> Talk Time, which um, yeah. is now the name for this section, because that's what Nissan and Sarang have called it. Um, Grogu. Grogu. Come on. Okay. Grogu. Huh? Grogu. Huh? <laughs> Grogu. Huh? Oh, 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 oh. Killed me. Absolutely killed me. Uh Din Djarin If you got if you laughing. got kids, that's just what you what you experience with them, right? Yeah. Once they once they recognize their name, you make fun of it. It's like yeah. Rosalie? Huh? <laughs> I mean, I do it with my cat, and I'm almost certain, and my kids, of course, but they've, they've grown out of that now. They just ignore me, <laughs> um, but uh, and quite rightly so. But with my cat, it's it's just fun. Like, oh, William. And in fact, uh, Katie was at the window just a moment ago. She almost joined the podcast, but uh, it's not possible for her to get through the window. Um, but yeah, just I love that 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 part of the story, that part of the the relationship, has must have come from a real relationship in real life. It's just, it's too well written. Yeah. You know? 
Um, and I'm surprised by how many people um, do not like it and are not enjoying it, but still watching it for some reason. <laughs> um, I, fa- I had a conversation with uh, another German dude earlier today, or no, yesterday, I beg your pardon. And um, he watches it just to make fun of it. And I don't understand. I genuinely sit down with the Mandalorian and have my me time. And my reaction is I always press play and I was the first thing I do. How long is the episode? How long is this <laughs> period of joy in my life? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. last this episode just aired was 31 minutes and I was so sad. I'm like, I was hoping for 45, 45, 42, <laughs> somewhere 40 something, 31. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, but however, Dan, um, what a show it was. Yep. Let me, let me just jump in quickly. Like you said, you talked to another German guy. So there's a guy sitting on his chair wearing Mr. Gogu short pants and, and sweaters and yes. watching Grogu. Yes. And he's making fun of Grogu. Making fun of how of bad Mr. the Mandalorian is, according to him. All right. Okay. No, no. This episode was great. And you so know, good. Hang on. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah. If you haven't watched it, please turn off YouTube right now. Yeah. Turn off Reddit. Turn off Instagram and just, you know, go somewhere. Yeah. We can't be held responsible right now. It's, it's, it's a no, few days old. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. But holy cow. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, there he is. Yeah. That's a rather oh, special that piece a of art. That's a, yeah, a special piece of art. Yeah. Tell us a story. What a coincidence. There's a story behind that. Yeah. Actually, I have uh, quite a few pieces of Star Wars art in my uh, 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 home office. And um, quite coincidentally, the, uh, Danny Beck, which is a great uh, American painter and illustrator, he pe- finished this painting a couple days ago of Boba Fett. It's like a commissioned painting that I asked him to to do like months ago without even knowing that Boba is going to be on the Mandalorian episode. It was just something that I wanted to go on my wall. And holy cow, isn't that beautiful? It's, it's I mean, I, I cannot draw. I can barely hold a pencil. So anything impresses me. But I just love what he did with all of yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, that's not something we've done out of the internet. That's something you've you've paid for. You commissioned that art that will be hanging Correct. in your house somewhere. In my office or in your office, yeah. 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 Upgraded to the kitchen or something. <laughs> <laughs> A living room. <laughs> what? Living room. Hey <laughs> hey honey. There's a really blank space <laughs> on that wall over there. <laughs> Can't we hang Boosh and Boba and Grogu and <laughs> yeah, So yeah, he's considering getting Grogu made, right? You want a Grogu painting? I, I kind of do want a Grogu. Yeah, I, 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 I'm suckered in with the whole Baby Yoda, the child Grogu thing. I'm even referring to him as Grogu now. But we, we've, you know, we've, we've got there, we've got to that point. <laughs> No, but it's so so cool to see Boba Fett returning because I think that's the most epic return. You know, him being almost you know in a com- com- comedic way being being uh, you know lost in, in the last episode, in episode uh, four, five, six in the Salak pit. I mean, that was kind of not worthy for a high-profile uh, character from the Star Wars universe, but now he's returned, and that's so cool. It's just that the stars have aligned, you know, the actor, the timing, the storyline, nothing feels forced, is what I'm trying to say. Nothing, it all feels <laughs> quite natural, quite organic. Um, and yeah. of course, they've told a story, so they could have, you know, this could be the whole point. But he is one of the most loved characters in the whole of the Star Wars universe. Um, yeah, that's that's money. That is money, baby. Uh, and how, how cool did he, did they like kind of get him in the show i mean he's such a badass just you know killing all those stormtroopers with his uh, uh I can't remember how do you call it staff staff, staff kind yeah. of thing staff kind of thing yeah so and then you know jumping into his old armor and he looks a little bit kind of daddy style boba fett he's he's just gained a little bit of weight but that's totally cool i mean he's also gained uh, a lot of years 
So to me, it was just cool to see that, you know, that uniform and, and the helmet being live again. You know. Yeah, that was, was a cool moment. I mean, again, spoilers, it's too late for that now, but he wants his armor back from Din and and he's yeah, you'll give it to him, we'll 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 support you and we'll protect you all all the way through. And then he just looks over and sees that he's just left the door open on the bus. You know, the door's just open <laughs> on the bus, the space bus. And um <laughs> so the next thing you know, there he is in the armor. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And it answers and the how, whole how question about the the Sarlacc pit, you know, did he get out? Did he survive? There's always been this theory that Boba Fett was not dead. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the rules of movies and TV shows, if you don't see a body, they ain't dead, you know. Yep, yep. That's the rule. I think in the, ex in the extended universe, there was a, a story that, that went like um, Dengar, who was another um, bounty hunter that he was competing with to get Han Solo, that Dengar actually found him when he climbed out of the Sarlacc and he helped him to actually survive. But I don't know if this will be part of the, the canon or not, but I really kind of like that 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 guild of, of bounty hunters, like the guild that you see uh, among the Mandalorians too, that those kind of guild of actually bad people, you know, the dirty, they do the dirty jobs, that they kind of stick together and help each other. Absolutely. So I really like that idea. And also Dengar being quite a, a, a important character in the Clone Wars, I think that would totally make sense to implement him like later, maybe in a Boba Fett spin-off. Yeah. Do you think that's coming, a Boba Fett spin-off? Ah, I want to see that. I mean, that, that would be money left that's on money. the table if they wouldn't do that. Yeah, I Because, agree. I mean, the, the, the actor who plays Boba Fett, he's already at a certain age, so you, can, you cannot wait too long to yeah. kind of do that thing. And there's a lot of stories to tell with, with his father, Django, and then his father being murdered by Mace Windu. And, you know, later him chasing Han Solo and, and you know, falling down the Sarlacc pit, climbing out. What happened in the time between? It's, it's quite a couple of years between Return of the Jedi and The Mandalorian. Mm. I, mean, I think it's in quite an interesting arc to be told. Yep, definitely. Ultimately... Um... It's my moment of enjoyment, which I mentioned earlier. The Mandalorian is my time, and I count the seconds from when that starts to the moment it ends, and then I watch the paintings at the end and the music. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the very few times in my life where I'm just switched off or, or on, yeah. depending on how you look at it. But, um, yeah, I, I, I love it. Um, yeah. I quite enjoy it. It's a feel well show. It's a feel well show, isn't it? It's yeah. I mean, it's so it's so fan serving and so like um what's the word? It's so it's so giving, you know. It's like yeah. here's a little bit, here's a little bit more, and then you know, um, so, uh, Sarang again wrote in the chat, who's who's killing it with the chat today, that Grogu is what Jar Jar Binks should have been or could have been. Agreed. And Agreed. Man, is that a comment that's, that's absolutely nailed it. Um. They forced Jar Jar Binks upon us, and we didn't want it. It wasn't the right time, wasn't the right character, it wasn't the right approach. But little did we know, we wanted a Baby Yoda. Mm -hmm. My kids are so into Baby Yoda, to Grogu, sorry, and they've never even seen an episode because you know they're a bit too yep. young for that, right? Yeah, but um, they're 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 bought in. Same here. Rosalie's playing with my small Lego mm. Baby Yoda all the time. You know, she pulls it out the Razor Crest. Speaking of, how did you feel about the Razor Crest being completely demolished? I can't destroyed? really, I can't really answer honestly because I wrote to you in the afternoon of, of Friday and said, "Don't go on Reddit. There's spoilers." That's the spoiler uh -huh. I saw. I saw that the Razor right. Crest had had exploded and been been blown up, and uh -huh. I couldn't react honestly because I knew it was going to happen. So I can't really answer your question apart from like, oh, yeah, I saw that. You know what? I, I kind of, I was sitting on the couch and I was like, huh? and my wife who was sitting next to me, she was like, is everything all right? I was like, yeah, but that's a Razor Crest. Everything hell. My Lego. They just destroyed the Razor Crest. Yeah, my Lego. I don't, <laughs> don't want to ruin my Lego. No, like that was one of the most unique ships. And ever, I think I, I've heard so few people like kind of arguing that it's not a cool ship. But most of the guys, they liked it. I think the Lego set sold in, in numbers. Uh, 
I mean, why did they destroy it? Probably to make a point, and that was would have been or will have been a very smart move if they really kind of wanted to emphasize how bad True. Moff Gideon and his boss, which we talk about later, ultimately is. Yeah, yeah, it's so, but, it could be a power play, but also I think that uh, I think the moment when he's searching through the ashes and he finds Grogu's little ball, I'm like. Yeah, I know what they're trying to do to us emotionally, but I couldn't help it. I mean, I always yeah. get, I always kind of get frustrated with those kinds of things because there's all this debris and detritus, and he just happens to find, you know, the ball, you know, because it, it exploded. So it's not, <laughs> it's not as if the ship burned and it was exactly where it was when when he parked it there, and you know, yeah. put the handbrake on and everything. But he just, he just happened to find the ball, and that story. That kind of story normally frustrates me, but it cut me deep, man. It cut me deep. Yeah, same here. Yeah, yeah that give was kind of interesting to, or kind of devastating at some point to see to see the Razor Crisco. But you know, the ship's destroyed. But maybe it was just one ship among a few that looks similar. I mean, I think there there are other Millennium Falcons too that look similarly. So you never know. Maybe he finds another Razor Crest too. I don't know. I mean, I'm interested to know what they're going to do with it. So, uh, yeah, we've, uh, I don't know, sad. What a sad podcast today, Dan. No, it's not. Because we got another top villain with uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn being like the big boss that's even above the bad, bad Moff Gideon. I think that was just a stroke of genius to be added, right? Yeah. So I was just, you know. Having a cuddle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it, it's for me. You'll never beat Darth Vader. That they will. Sure. I mean, he's a classic character. Yeah, he's classic. No, there's but, no doubt about it. He's pop culture. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He's 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 gone beyond the movies and and the stories. So everything I ever see with Star Wars is always less than. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah I. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is, if it ain't Darth Vader, I'm not that interested. Okay. Is, okay. So that must be being totally honest. But uh, have you have you watched Rebels, Star Wars Rebels? No, I haven't. I haven't. Ah, that's a, that's a big point. Yeah, you should definitely give that a chance. It's a little bit kind of childish, or at least targeted for like younger audiences, but it provides quite substantial parts of the overall story and gives you like a proper picture of who Thrawn actually is. So that's highly recommended. Okay. And, and Serang, I mean, Serang is making a very good point. I think one of the main, or could be, but my perspective, one of the main reasons why they sacrificed the Razor Crest was to make room for the Slave One return. Yeah, you can't have two too big. You can only serve one master, you know. Correct. Yeah. So. And Slave One, I mean. Yeah. That's iconic, just the way that it looks like someone just stood there, you know, and, and going through the. Goes with the space of space. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm. I mean, I actually, I mean, from from an aesthetic standpoint, I like the Razor Crest better because the. the uh, let's be honest. I mean, Slave One. It's like yeah, flying flat iron, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's so iconic because it's Boba Fett's ship, and you know they move Han Solo in Carbonite uh, into the ship, and you know it's just part of the the overall story that. Yeah, I think they wow. made the right decision to sacrifice. I the think they did course. too. I mean, what was it? What was this uh, Game of Thrones where they would kill off a main character? You know, we've the world has changed since things like Game of Thrones has been uh, aired because anything can happen. You know, um, but yeah, I'm. I was sad, but not that sad because I'm honestly not. The biggest star Star Wars fan in the world. I just happen to enjoy what I enjoy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and when I get more of it, I, I tend to delve deeper into that. And I'm I'm pretty strictly uh, original trilogy, um, few books, Mandalorian. I've been burned too many times, is what I'm saying, Dan. I've been burned <laughs> too many times. Um, well, what has been seen cannot be unseen. Episode seven, eight, nine. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. However, I'm still Sadly. still want a petition for Jar Jar Binks to come back in in the Mandalorian. Old man <laughs> Binks. Maybe Grogu Old man Jar Jar. Kill him. Yeah. The veteran Jar Jar. 
Sorry, when Grogu is throwing those stormtroopers around that room, I'm like, my goodness, he's going to be an evil Yoda. And I know I'm not the first person to say that, but yeah. there's, they're, they're, they're showing so much evil, you know, potential in him, hatred and, and anger, you know. Yeah. But then, then Moff Gideon said, put the child in shackles. You got baby <laughs> shackles? <laughs> You've got shackles that will fit a baby. <laughs> well, if you have some, some young Jedis, you might have to put them in shackles too. I don't know. <laughs> but that was funny. <laughs> put them in shackles. Yeah. Oh, put boy. the child in some chains. Not the adult chains, not the big monster chains, the chains that are strictly reserved for children. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well. Well, we'll see. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm, I can't wait for Friday to see how this overall story will continue. Yep. And uh, I yep. think there's a lot in store for us, especially with Mando now teaming up with uh, fin uh, Finchendek. And uh, Boba Fett, of course. Yeah, I'm excited. I am truly excited. I'm also excite. sad that there's only I excited. <laughs> Is there two episodes left? Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, I think so. They've got a lot to do. Lots to do. Mm -hmm. I think they will. They will. Uh, you know, end end the season, the second season, with a lot of question marks still being unresolved. Oh heck, yes, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of questions left unresolved, I was always told to leave people wanting more, Dan. Mm -hmm, I know. Which is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> so, people that have stayed with us through the Mandalorian chat, thank you. I know we lost a few people, and that's absolutely fine. But as Dan said, we do this because we love it, and we also happen to love the Mandalorian. And maybe we've converted a few people, Dan. You never know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. So uh, um, we should ask people to follow us on Instagram. So uh, I'm Andy Guitar Geek. Dan, what's you for your birthday? <laughs> if you look for me on Instagram, you can either just type in Dan fourteen oh six eight three, or you just search for Doctor Dan or Ibanez Dan, and you will definitely find me among the top results. Alternatively, uh, guitar at Guitar Stories Podcast. That's pretty simple. Well done in bagging that name, my friend. Yeah, yeah. But before we close, we should definitely also uh, continue with the Bulldog giveaway. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you can win it if you collect four words. And the second word that you got to collect is the first name of the character that I got painted this week. This is the second word. Okay. So Our solution. Just... Oops. Oops. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I just want to help people. That's that's just I'm a help, helpful guy. So the first, if you want the first word, you have to listen to last week's podcast. And yeah, that find was the, the artist's was name who painted the, the Steve Vai yes. guitar. Last name. Now I this want to have week, the first name of the character that I got painted this week. And then we'll have two more questions, one next week and one the week after. But before we leave, I just want to say that. Uh, Nissan 570 started watching The Mandalorian because of us. Our job is done. Whoa. We've done it. We've done it. Awesome. So now we've... we've changed one person's life. Yeah. All the boxes um, are now checked for me this night. <laughs> hang on a minute. And then right at the end, Mikhail says bye in the chat, which means that he was here the whole time, <laughs> or at least here right now. Where's our damn super chat? Where's the super chat? I need coffee. <laughs> I am kidding. I appreciate you and I love you, Mikhail. So I, I, I always think that's absolutely pointless. Not pointless, but unnecessary. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Instagram and all that stuff. And if you haven't, haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so because, you know, numbers. Yeah. Um, what are we coming and back with next us. week? Uh, I think we're going to have an artist, but uh, we have figured out which one. So it will be a episode with guests. And uh, don't forget to tag your instruments, share your guitar stories, and tag the Guitar Stories podcast so you will be featured on next week's live stream. And then we'll also repost those images on the Instagram account for sure. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Also, across pollination. <laughs> All right. Yeah. If you're in the live chat, thank you for staying with us. And thank you for uh, listening if you're part of the audio podcast. I've had a wonderful time, Dan. Thank you, man. 
Thank you for taking time and thanks to everyone in the chat. See you very soon and bye bye. Bye everybody. He's waving. Guitar Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar.